Unit 7, Lesson 3, The Scaling Principle for Area. Complete the following table using the figures from below. So for A, B, C, and D, we need to find the area of the original figures. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. A is a triangle, and I know that the area formula for a triangle is 1 half base times height. I have the base 8 and the height 3, so I can go ahead and find what that is. So area of a triangle is base times height, so 8 times 3 divided in half, that's equal to 24 divided by 2, which is 12. I'm going to copy that right up here in the grid or the table. For the second one, as you can see, the height is on the outside of the triangle. This is an obtuse triangle because angle C right here is obtuse. So the height is going to be on the outside. So the base is 5 times the height of 3 divided in half. So 15 divided by 2 is 7 and a half. I'm going to jot that right here in the table. Okay, so down below, C, it looks like I have a parallelogram. The area formula for that is base times height. So the base is 5 times the height of 4. So the area is equal to 20. And for the next parallelogram of some sort, or it's from parallelogram family, so again the area is equal to base times height. So that's equal to 3 times 2, which gives us a final product of 6. So in terms of bases and heights, we need to apply the scale factor that's given to us in the table right here as directed by the arrow. So I'm going to look at the dimensions of A and multiply by 3. So I have the dimensions of the base and height to be 24 by 9. For the second one, B, I have a scale factor of 2. So the base is 10 by 6. And for C, the scale factor is 1 half. So the base is 5 halves, or 2.5 by 2. And for D, the scale factor is 3 halves. So if I multiply that to the base and the height, I get 4.5 by 3. So the area of the uh, similar figure is for part A and B, is um, take the dimensions, multiply them, and divide it in half, and we get 108 for A, Ten times six is sixty divided in half is thirty. Two and a half times two is five, and four and a half times three is thirteen and a half. And the reason as to why C and D, we just go ahead and multiply the dimensions is because the area formula is equal to base times height. Now if we write the areas in terms of a ratio, the area of the similar figure. 108 to the original 12, 30 to 7.5, 5 to 20, and 13.5 to 6. And when we go to simplify the ratio of the areas, it's 108 to 12. So 108 divided by 12 is equal to 9. 30 divided by 7.5 is equal to 4. 5 divided by 20 is 1 fourth. And 13.5 divided by 6 gives me about 27 over 12, which is equal to 9 fourths. 
So here's the definition for the scaling principle for area. If two figures are similar, the ratio of their areas is equal to the ratio of their sides squared. Okay, so I would transfer this definition to your composition notebooks. Let's take a look at example one. Find the ratio of the areas of each pair of similar figures. The lengths of corresponding lines segments are shown. So if you take a look at the pentagon, you can see that the scale factor that takes the smaller pentagon to the larger pentagon is 5 over 2. That means that according to the scaling principle for area, the areas of the larger to the smaller is 25 over 4. Therefore, the ratio of the area for the smaller to the larger is 4 to 25. The scale factor for the um, figures for B is 2 thirds, therefore the ratio of area is 4 ninths, and we write it as 9 to 4. Rectangles A and B are similar. If the area of A is 88 square millimeters, what is the area of B? Well, what we can tell you is this. We've got two values, 30 and 16, so the scale factor is 30 over 16. This is approximately equal to 1.875. The area scale factor is that value squared. So that means the area for B is equal to the area scale factor times the area of A. I know that the area of A is 88 square millimeters. And that gives me an approximation of 309.375 if you plug this into your calculator. So the final statement is that the area for B is 
3.309.375 square millimeters. Okay, example three. Figures E and F are similar and are drawn to scale. If the area of E is 120 square millimeters, what is the area of F? When I look at this diagram, or both of these diagrams, I see that the first diagram, E, is larger than the second diagram, F. And I see 2.4 and 15. And curiosity just strikes me as that, you know, 2.4 is a number that's less than 15. Isn't it supposed to have bigger dimensions? And of course it's in terms of centimeters, is what I notice, versus millimeters. So it is bigger even though 2.4 is smaller than 15. And what I need to do is convert um, 2.4 centimeters to millimeters. Okay, now on a Regents exam in the back, they do give you unit conversions so that you're able to do that. So 2.4 centimeters is equal to 24 millimeters. So now I can identify the length scale factor. which is 15 to 24, or 15 over 24, and that simplifies to 0 0.625. So the area scale factor is 0 0.625 square so I'm looking for the area of F so that's equal to the area scale factor times the area of E, which is given as 120 square millimeters. That amounts to 46.8. So the area of figure F is 46.875 square millimeters. So a question I would like to pose to you at this time is, how can you describe the scaling principle for area? Okay, so you've already seen, according to the definition of the scaling principle for area, if you have similar figures, and we'll name them A and B, and they're related by a scale factor R, then their respective areas are related by a factor of R squared. So let's take a look at example four. Here's an example of another circumstance of scaling and its effect on area. Think about what you're observing. So the question posed is, what if the object is stretched by different amounts horizontally and vertically? We start off with area as one unit square, or square unit. For the second one, the area is equal to three square units. Okay, and as you can see over here, we end up with 
15 square units. So the area of the square on the left is 1. The area of its image on the right is 3. And how we can compare the area of the original to the area of the image is that we end up with 15 square units. The small star has an area of 5. The large star is obtained from the small star by stretching by a factor of 2 in the horizontal direction and by a factor of 3 in the vertical direction. Find the area of the largest star. So I'm going to underline the important information. Small star has an area of 5. Stretch by a factor of 2. in the horizontal direction and by a factor of 3 in the vertical direction. The area of a figure that is scaled in perpendicular directions okay, this upside down T means perpendicular is equal to the area of the original figure times the product of the scale factors for each direction. So that means that the large star has an area equal to the original star times the product of the scale factors. So area is equal to the area of the smaller star times the product of 2 times 3, which is equal to 30. The area of the larger star is 30. So as a result, we have a lesson summary at the conclusion of this lesson. We have a scaling principle for triangles, polygons, and area. If you have similar triangles, or if you have similar polygons, or if you have similar figures, they are all related by a scale factor of r, then their respective areas are related by a factor of r squared.